Hi, welcome. Welcome to APPS and Peregrine Global Services webinar series, 2022 spring. And my name is Kayla Lee at APPS. And welcome all. Since I've gone through a participant's name and I've noticed that most of you are attending for the first time. So let me briefly introduce APBS before we go on with the webinar. APBS is Organization for Business Management Schools. And we have about 140 business schools around the globe, but mostly Asia Pacific regions with the mission of promote and enhance the education of the business management schools. And the contents are Asia Pacific centrics. We offer conferences in the spring and in the fall. And we also offer Dean's programs and action learning programs and doing business in Asia and workshops like this. And we already have opened up our webpage for our upcoming June 1st and 2nd academic conference. So after this webinar, please check out our website at www.abbs.org. And if you are interested in becoming a member of us, please let me know. So without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Aluma Jamiransaran, who is a director of Asia Pacific Region Operation of the Peregrine Global Services based in Tokyo, Alima. Great, thank you, Kayla. And good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. And I'd like to thank you for joining us in our today's workshop. And uh, today we plan to discuss about how to develop and assess the skills that are most essential for our learners, not only in uh, school, but also after they graduate from our programs. Uh, again, uh, my name is Alima Jamian Soren, and I am based in Tokyo, Japan, uh, running the uh, Asia Pacific operations of Peregrine Global. And um, here's our contact information. Uh, been running um, you know, the Asia Pacific office in Tokyo for the last uh, year and a half, but I've been with Peregrine Global for uh, almost 10 years and um, been also a higher education consultant and um, taught management and uh, business leadership courses to graduate students. Now, a Peregrine Global Services has provided um, uh, various higher education solutions, including assessment uh, to uh, our partner institutions for also more than 10 years. And we currently have more than 500 client and partner institutions worldwide. And we have provided um, you know, more than 2 million assessments to our higher educational partners. And today's webinar, as Kayla mentioned, is brought to you by Peregrine in our partnership with the Association of Asia Pacific Business Schools. And we work closely with AAPBS and delighted to uh, spend this time with you today. So thank you. And so let's just straight uh, go into it. Uh, a couple um, housekeeping items. We are recording this session. So uh, at the completion of it, we'll be happy to share with you the link to the video recording. And if you wanted a copy of the uh, slides, I'll be happy to share them with you too. All right. So uh, over the last 10 years, right, uh, there have been many studies and reports and also media outlets have highlighted uh, there exist significant skill gaps in our workforce, right? And the workplace readiness skills or professional skills, uh, which are also often referred to as uh, soft skills, are the personal qualities necessary for situational awareness and workplace effectiveness. So these skills include adaptability, communication, uh, creative thinking, and, uh, and so forth, right? And over the years, uh, employers and higher education institutions have found difficulty in defining, evaluating, and also developing these, these skills. So uh, there are, as I mentioned, many studies. And for example, the Wall Street Journal in its uh, 2016 employee year survey uh, reported that 92% of executives consider soft skills and technical skills to be equally important. And there has been also linked in survey uh, in 2018 where uh, the HR managers, 60% uh, of them, stated that uh, lack of uh, soft skills in leadership limiting company 
productivity levels. And just one more study out of MIT Sloan School of Business uh, reported that soft skills uh, training uh, at five Bangalore factories, right, yielded a 250% increase in ROI. And, uh, you know, there's also more studies and I can share with you. And one of those studies is by the Society for Human Resource Management, which is based out of the US. And in 2019, they identified uh, top five uh, sort of missing soft skills, being as problem solving, communications, critical thinking, uh, innovation and creativity along with ability to deal with complexity and ambiguity. And then the last skill we have all noticed, especially in the last uh, two years, how essential those have been for the survival of uh, some organizations even, right? And the, here's an example of a Stanford Research Institute uh, sort of Mellon Foundation study where Fortune 500 CEO said that 75% of long-term job success depends on people skills while only 25% on technical knowledge. So the research is out there, right? And it's quite clear the skills that are needed are what we're calling soft skills. So these are also referred to as professional skills or workplace readiness skills. And the ones that are needed in the industry most are identified as leadership, management, communication. And this is uh, you know, research coming out of Cambridge Market Intelligence Unit in 2020. 2020. So then how are we able to develop those soft skills, right? And most and foremost, through experiential learning or what we call action-based learning. Uh, we can also develop soft skills in our learners by partnering with companies through various internships or in business and in industry experiences. Uh, there are many leadership workshop and based on case studies, we also have simulation exercises that imitate the real world behavior and challenges. And then there are multiple various projects that you can run for your learners across programs, across you know, uh, different um, sections in partnership with industry and academia. And then a lot of the times you can require your learners to be active, be it active in student government associations or any of the associations they can either establish or become part of. And um, there are many examples of our business programs establishing in-school based uh, incubators to support startups uh, of a small or various supporting activities or business consulting activities uh, in support of small and medium-sized businesses. So in the US, we have uh, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, which has been also expanding its, uh, you know, uh, philosophies and ideas across the world. And uh, they have put together a task force of uh, college career services and human resource uh, staffing professionals. And they have identified these sort of eight competencies uh, associated with career readiness. So uh, when we measure soft skills, we are able to assess and demonstrate the learning outcome requirements for program and uh, also institutional accreditation, right? There's a famous saying that we can't uh, manage what we can't measure. So we come with that philosophy and offer our solutions in that spirit. And when we measure uh, soft skills, we can also strengthen our workforce by developing career ready graduates but also we are able to develop the competencies that help our students to get not only a job, but also to keep it and excel at their future careers. And then also uh, they can enhance the long-term personal and professional development through actionable feedback that at the end of the day, what we higher educational institutions are committed to, right? To continually improve our offerings, to continually improve our programs, and the delivery of uh, services to our learners. And then when we measure soft skills, we are also able to determine the areas of improvement within our academic programs. And then uh, the quality is uh, closely tied to you know, accreditation, right? 
And then a lot of the times international accreditation putting more and more emphasis on career readiness of our graduates because that's what the industry demands. And so uh, many programmatic or institutional accredit accreditors have uh, learning outcome requirements tied specifically to you know, soft skill uh, attainment. And uh, when you measure soft skills, you can also assess and demonstrate the competencies in soft skill areas tied to learning outcomes that are attained at your academic programs. So again, we want to strengthen our workforce, workforce by developing career ready graduates. And then we really, as I mentioned, want to help our graduates to get the job, keep the job and be more successful in their uh, career choices. But we all know that assessing soft skills is quite difficult, right? Not only assessing the soft skills, but it's actually even complicated to even identify and define the soft skills that we want to develop at our institutions. There's also the lack of the standardization of categories of soft skills that exist. And sometimes uh, assessing soft skills could be quite one dimensional. And uh, the term soft skill itself is quite misleading. So that's why I keep kind of bringing the wider references to, references to soft skills as being, you know, uh, professional readiness skills and workplace success skills and so forth. But in assessing soft skills, um, it's kind of hard to get subjectivity uh, and bias out of the whole process. And I'll show you some examples how, you know, we faced with those challenges. And um, if you are on the path to quality improvement and working with the, you know, institutional, national, or programmatic or international accreditation, then you really want to be able to objectively assess soft skills, not only for compliance purposes, again, but also to improve your offerings to your learners. So what is the value skills, right? So Peregrine has developed um, a soft skills assessment tool we call value skills. So that's our solution to the challenges that you are facing in developing, assessing, and improving the uh, professional skills of our graduates who go into the real world employment world, right? So it is a 360 degree based uh, evaluation tool. So what it means is uh, through uh, this evaluation, we are able to directly measure proficiency level of uh, these uh, soft skill competencies of our learners with the use of uh, perspectives of uh, peers, supervisors, advisors, mentors, or colleagues. And then in the case of uh, higher education, we're talking about academic advisors, we're talking about faculty, instructors, or in the graduate and doctoral level programs, maybe uh, you know peers who are in the program. So with the value skills tool, you are able to gain objective and accurate measures of uh, relative skill levels as expressed um, through these uh, competencies. And as with the, all of our solutions here at Peregrine, uh, and as I've mentioned and alluded to, there's a great nexus with accreditation and we work closely with all accreditors, be it AACSB, which um, has um, as part of the programmatic institutional learning goals uh, includes uh, curriculum content, which covers the soft skills area. We also work closely with the Association of MBA programs that specifically lists out an IACB, for example, has critical thinking, teamwork, communication, and leadership as part of its key learning outcomes. And then if you're working with ACBSB, which is another partner of ours, they have in their standards, again, clearly stated out that uh, programs have to demonstrate capacity to synthesize and apply knowledge and skills from an organizational perspective uh, for their learners. All right. So um, to get on the same page, let's go through some definitions. So we are uh, all talking about the same stuff. So first, um, uh, what is an assessment item? So assessment item is a specific skill presented within the assessment instrument. So assessment items include uh, competency, so relational influential types organized by character, skill, action categories. So this is your, you know, competency essentially. This is the assessment item you're including in your value skills. So what is an instrument template? 
So instrument template is the specific tool used for the value skills assessment. And instrument templates are available to use or modify or can be created with your selection of assessment items. We have our templates available to you, uh, but if you wanted to add or subtract, or if you wanted to create a multiple instrument templates to assess perhaps your faculty, uh, perhaps your staff, perhaps your learners, then you can create them using various instrument templates. And that the assessment is created when an instrument template is used to evaluate a group of participants. So the assessment is typically given a name and you identify certain completion dates, due dates. Now participant is the person who is actually being assessed through evaluate skills by evaluators. An evaluator is the person who fills out an assessment for a particular participant. So for each participant, uh, we recommend that there should be a variety of evaluators, right, from different organizational levels to give a well-rounded feedback. And in the case of our learners, as I mentioned, you can have a student cohort groups, you can have um, academic advisors, instructors. And if a student has been involved in a internship, which a lot of our graduate level management and MBA programs have, then you can have interlocutors or supervisors from their internships uh, included as part of the evaluator team. And then, as you know, uh, from um, uh, your previous interactions with Peregrine, I hope that we are well known for our expansive reporting capabilities. And then, so the reports are then generated from the data collected in the assessment process. The individual results reports summarizes a participant's you know, collection of evaluations. There's also a group report and it averages the scores of a group of participants for an assessment. So you can have your student cohort groups uh, defined as, you know, by graduation, uh, semester terms or enrollment in different courses or internship uh, experiences and so forth. All right, so now that we are all on the same page, um, let's look at um, what does the instrument look like. So you can, as I mentioned, create multiple uh, flexible and customizable instruments, right? And in order to do that, uh, you can select the assessment items from a database of 200 plus skills and corresponding rubrics that we have generated and we have in our database. So you can also write or add your own skills and rubrics to add uh, to your assessment in addition to what we offer, but you know, we have a very expansive database, as you can see, of 200 plus skills. So um, you don't probably need to, but you know, you never know. We have many innovative programs that we work with that go above and beyond of what we think is uh, pretty standard. Let's see. So for example, uh, in terms of assessment items on this slide, you see adaptability, business trend awareness, change leadership, curiosity, dealing with uncertainty and ambiguity, emotional intelligence and entrepreneurial um, skills included in this particular instrument template. So how do you create the instrument, right? And we can use an analogy uh, of ordering a pizza. As you know all too well, restaurants have uh, uh, pre-created pizzas on the menu, or you can build your own custom pizza. So in the value skills, the ingredients are the assessment items and the individual skills you want to assess, in this case, as you saw, dependability, innovation, or critical thinking. And then to make your own customized pizza, you can choose from the available instrument templates or create your own pizza. And as I mentioned, by utilizing our database of 200 plus, um, skills. So we already have uh, several pre-made options in the instrument templates, as I mentioned. So how do you create the instrument is first, uh, of course, you create an account and then you can browse through available instrument templates and see, you know, how well it aligns with your particular program's needs, right? 
And uh, you can make uh, changes, as I mentioned, add or subtract certain skills. And then you can also run uh, what we call the instrument report to see the items that included that are included in the instrument and also evaluation rubrics for each individual item. And then, uh, you know, you can add, delete, as I mentioned, customize it, and you create your assessment uh, if you want to use a pre-made template just as is, or uh, if you want to, you know, communicate with your team members, have them review, you can download the instrument report, share it with them, and then go through the process of uh, adding, subtracting, or finalizing the instrument report. And then the instrument report is this, you know, PDF uh, file of all your uh, assessment items included along with the uh, rubrics for each item. And then here I want to mention that the rubrics is the part, and I think that helps you to kind of get rid of that subjectivity, right? And uh, having this instrument report really helps not only the participant, but also the evaluators to understand what is the actual assessment, right? And then with the rubrics, you are able to increase the objectiv objectivity of the assessment. And um, the nice thing is uh, within each rubric, as you can see, uh, it provides you a sample of behaviors that correspond to a particular level of behavior. So you can see here critical thinking and problem solving skill. And then in order to score at five, four, three, two, one, you can see what are the types of behaviors that are exhibited by the participant, right? And then so this uh, um, takes the, you know, uh, subjectivity out of and the bias out of individual evaluators. And then you can um, really get an assessment that is consistent across the board for the learners that you are evaluating. Um, so the uh, rubrics are usually, you know, five point Likert scale based, and uh, they are, um, you can also add um, written feedback uh, along with your rubric evaluation for each skill for your uh, participant. As with all of our uh, services, we provide you with a very easy to use uh, user interface. And uh, as a program administrator, uh, you are able to create and manage various instruments uh, to address the specific needs of your uh, learners. And then you can track a live uh, progress of evaluations here where you can generate the reports, you can send email messages and reminders and uh, uh, really have a full access to your student results and evaluations and so forth. So a couple of words about uh, choosing evaluators, right? So participants is pretty straightforward enough. Uh, in terms of evaluators, there are a couple options. You can assign evaluators for each participant, or you can have the participant identify who they want to have um, as their evaluators, right? Or you can um, sort of use the combination of the both, and then most often we do recommend you require a minimum number of evaluators. So if you wanna get uh, at least two to three evaluations completed for each participant, um, I would recommend just expand the list of evaluators, maybe reach out to four to five evaluators or five to six and uh, more evaluators you have, you know, better information you are able to collect for your each participant's uh, feedback. So by using this uh, value skills, right, you are able to measure change and growth and in individual participants uh, sort of attainment of these soft skills and competencies, right? And uh, you will be able to, of course, assess all assessment results within the administrative website, as I mentioned. And then nice thing is you are able to conduct a longitudinal analysis with a, a pre and post test sort of construct especially for uh, graduate students, for example, when they enter into your program, and especially if your program is focused on experiential learning, right, is focused on uh, graduating learners who are ready to lead their businesses or industries of their choice, 
if you collect some baseline measurements of these professional uh, skills when they enter the program, and then if you are able to measure those same competencies upon completion of their program, then you'll be able to really measure the change and growth for each of your individual learners. So you utilize the comparison to see growth in the areas of uh, where most importantly, additional resources, learning or training may be required for your uh, students or learners. So let's go over uh, the different uh, roles of uh, the participant and uh, the evaluator. So each participant, of course, um, receives an email invitation with instructions on how to create an account to utilize the value skills. And then uh, they will um, essentially log into the platform. They upload a profile picture as a visual cue for evaluators. So you know when evaluators are faced with multiple evaluations, they'll be able to easily identify who's uh, assessment instrument they are working on, which is nice. And then uh, participants can enter evaluators uh, if that's how the system is set up. And then, as I mentioned, try to kind of have um, people who are representative from different um, organizational levels or hierarchical levels. So you get a more fuller picture. And then participants can run the instrument report to see what are the different criteria or what are the skills that he or she is being evaluated on. And um, they can also complete a self-evaluation, which has a great value in and of itself. And uh, run the participant report after all the assessments have been submitted. And then they can also, uh, using the system, build an action plan for personal development, also for professional development, which actually comes out of the participant report. And here's an example of uh, what um, the landing page for the participant may look like, right? And here they can check the status of any pending assessments. They can run a report on their individual results. Here also they can uh, download a copy of the assessment instrument, also the report itself. Now for the evaluator, you know, they also receive an email invitation with instructions on how to create an evaluate skills account. And then they'll also log into the platform, set a password for their account. And then they can view um, under the My Evaluations tab on the dashboard, um, which evaluations have been completed, which evaluations are still pending, right? And they can also run instrument report, um, especially if an evaluator is tasked to complete a multiple assessment. So multiple assessments with different sets of uh, assessment items and you know rubrics, it's really helpful to know uh, and understand better which assessment includes uh, which uh, competencies. The evaluators, they can, of course, evaluate the participant. They can save a draft, or uh, they can complete the evaluation, and they can also submit their feedback. Um, one nice thing is uh, this allows evaluators, for example, if I'm an evaluator and I'm tasked to evaluate 10 students, right? And I'm uh, at the beginning not as familiar with the instrument. You know, I have the instrument report, I have reviewed it, and there are rubrics that tells me to helps me to you know um, uh, appropriately assess each participant uh, for a certain skill. But also, maybe after two or three evaluations, I get uh, more consistent in my scoring. Right? I get a better understanding of different skills and illustrations or behaviors that are exhibited by um, my, um, you know, the participants of the value skills that I'm evaluating. And then uh, I can go back, actually review previously submitted evaluations. If I need to make corrections, I can do so. And so that kind of, again, we want to make sure that the evaluations happen as objectively as possible. So for the evaluator, of course, the evaluator is rating the participant on the skills that are offered in the assessment instrument. And then they compare the experiences with the participant against the statements, behaviors, and scaling shown in the evaluation rubrics. It's pretty simple to submit an evaluation. And uh, as I mentioned, evaluator can review and add comments 
before they submit the evaluation. And then once the minimum number of evaluations has been completed, the participant can now generate an individual results report. And then if more evaluations are submitted, then I can, as a participant, also rerun the report with more, um, with additional data. And I want to mention here that all responses are confidential and are not associated to any particular evaluator. So if there's any written comments, they'll be listed as just a list of comments. And then uh, for the participant, they get um, the average for the evaluator evaluations. And as I mentioned with Peregrine, all of our solutions, um, the reporting capabilities uh, help you to you know, use this automated and streamlined process. And um, there are a number of them for this particular value skill service. One is the participant report, and it compares the participant score, uh, the self-evaluation score against the average evaluator score. And then also if there's a group report, of course there's a group one, so you can also uh, compare the participant score against the average group score in this report. Uh, the participant action plan report is uh, embedded into the participant report, and it's a, you know, a PDF file that could be edited, that could be, you know, uh, updated and changed, which is a nice tool if, I, as I am a participant, would like to, you know, have some information as to how to improve or which areas of my um, sort of uh, skills and abilities I want to improve based on the information gathered from the evaluations. And the group reports, um, provide the average of uh, self-evaluations and the average of evaluator scores for the group. And it also breaks down the results um, by the individuals who performed uh, significantly higher or lower than the group in each skill. So for example, uh, in this uh, slide, uh, we have a uh, view of the participant report, and it provides the average evaluator score by item. And so these are the assessment items. And then the blue line here shows the participant's average score. So you can easily see where are the relative strengths and potentially areas of improvement uh, by skill for this particular participant. And then here, another view of the slide shows, for example, uh, competency being emotional intelligence. And then the self score was 4.0, right? And the average for the evaluators was 3.8, which is slightly below that self score. But the group average was uh, above um, both the self score and the average for the evaluators, 4.15. So this actually tells quite a bit of information. What happens is through this process, learners learn to um, actually realistically get view of their sort of skills and competencies, right? And then at the beginning, they may score themselves uh, overly optimistically, let's just put it that way, right? But you still learn something from that process. I thought I was doing really well, but then I can see that my group average was above my self-evaluation. So there's some room for improvement for me, right? And then, uh, but also, the evaluators thought that I'm not as high on emotional intelligence as, that, than, as I thought of myself, right? So there's all good learning lessons, just, you know, even from this simple graph you can draw. I mentioned the action plan, right? The participant report uh, has an embedded action plan, which actually highlights the areas of strengths to sustain for the individual participant, but also it notes the uh, areas of, uh, uh, weaknesses to improve upon, right? And then uh, in this action plan, uh, learners can enter a timeline uh, for when I would like to improve and see results on those certain skills and competencies, but I also can enter a name of a person who can hold me accountable that I stick to that deadline, right? If I have certain tasks I want to complete, then I'll have a someone to check out upon me because plans are as good as uh, you know, you have uh, accountability built into it. So here's an example page of that action plan. So the skill here is uh, um, 
identified as a weakness is uh, open-mindedness, right? And there's a definition of what um, the open-mindedness is typically included. And then the self score was 3.0, uh, the evaluator average was uh, 2.4. So as you can see, um, I can actually list in more detail as to what I would like to do. If I want to become more open-minded, what can I do, right? Maybe I need to um, go meet um, um, people with a different uh, background than myself. It could be education-based, culture-based, you know, just background-based or, you know, region-based and so forth. And then, as I mentioned, you enter the timeline for when you want to complete uh, those action items and then who you will be working with to keep yourself accountable in order to complete your action plan. So here's an example of uh, group reports and which provide information about um, a group uh, of individuals' overall strengths and weaknesses. So for example, we have a competency being business trend awareness, right? There's a definition of it and there's an average for the self-assessments and there's an average for the uh, student cohort group. So self score average is 3.85. The group average was 4.28. And um, so in this example, our uh, students, um, they didn't feel as comfortable, as, com as confident and being aware of business trends, right? Uh, in terms of self-evaluations. But as a group, you know, they did 4.20. And then you get some information on frequency of ratings and then you know, broken down by um, item score by participant, also overall ratings by evaluators and their distribution. And here you can you know, come with the uh, knowledge of uh, where you would like to improve uh, and work with individuals who scored significantly below the group average. So that'll help you to kind of identify with whom you would like to work in a bit more on a bit more deeper level. Here's another example of a group report page. So this is average evaluated score by item for the group sorted from the highest score to the lowest score. So this helps you to see in this one nice simple donut image where are your areas of strength and where you could improve in terms of this you know listing and. Um, in this example, you can see that uh, my group is strong in accountability, which is really good news. So as a program or as a group of students, we did a great job, but uh, we could improve on uh, valuing diversity. So based with, you know, um, equipped with this information, I can work on uh, uh, offering or making changes to my curriculum. So how can you apply, uh, how can you use the value skills in your undergraduate programs? Uh, typically with the undergraduate programs, you use it as um, end of the academic program evaluation. And then uh, you can help them as part of the job hunting, job search, or if they're looking for an internship, this is another area where they can, uh, students can get more insight as to their strengths, right? Into their areas of interest or where they excel and then use that information to uh, further uh, their career uh, upon completion of the program. For the graduate students, it's more typical to see the pre and post program level assessment, especially if you want to directly measure your learning outcomes, attainment of uh, soft skill competencies. And then the action plan in this case uh, from the pre-program assessment could be used by the learners to develop certain skills that have been identified as weaknesses throughout their academic degree program. And then as I mentioned briefly, uh, you can easily use um, value skills for uh, your professional development purposes. And uh, you can use it as a traditional 360 degree based assessment in order to kind of use it for your um, performance evaluation purposes in order to gauge if uh, uh, your staff and faculty are in alignment with the mission, vision, and values of your organization. So in a sort of summary, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, value skills, the soft skills assessment tool provides you with the flexible, customizable assessment. And because we offer you standardized rubrics for all assessment items, 
you are able to use an assessment instrument that improves objectivity and offers a consistent assessment of uh, professional readiness skills. And then it is uh, it provides you with a very easy to manage process, right? Uh, through administrative website and also an ability to generate the report in order to use it for your professional development of staff or faculty or for your continuous improvement purposes at your academic program. And with the use of the group reports, you are able to determine those developmental needs, right? And then the participant action plan helps you to sustain the growth areas, you know, the strengths, which is wonderful, wonderful, but helps you most importantly to identify the areas of improvement. And with the, with the use of pre and post tests, uh, you are able to directly me measure change with individual participants' uh, development and um, improvement of those soft skills. So here, I'd like to thank you and ask you if you have any questions, here's our contact information.